Every year, thousands of people in hundreds of countries meet in the most luxurious places to talk about what they deem the most pressing issue in the world, climate change. 2015 was Paris, 2014 was Peru, 2013 was Warsaw, Poland, 2012 was Dubai, 2011 was South Africa, 2010 was Mexico. It's a vacation, really. I've always imagined the luxury, the parties, and of course the obnoxious virtue signaling, but that is the key word. I've only ever been able to imagine because the mainstream media, while they wouldn't dream of reporting on this stuff, let alone criticizing it. So here at The Rebel, we decided to check things out for ourselves. We decided to cover the 22nd Conference of the Parties on Climate Change in Marrakesh, Morocco. And that's where things got weird and interesting with our decision to cover this conference. We applied for media accreditation just like the other 2000 plus media. And the UN denied us. Why? Because they said we were advocacy journalists, okay? So it's just the CBCs and the Toronto Stars of the world they let in? Well, not exactly. The UN lets in the Smog Blog, the National Observer, the TAI, something called Earth Journalism News, and another clearly advocacy news group, something called the Ground Truth Project. So they do let in advocacy journalists, just not advocacy journalists that agree with their policies. Well, here in Canada, we believe in a little something called freedom of the press. And we have groups like the Canadian Association of Journalists, Canadian Journalists for Free Expression, and Penn Canada that fight for freedom of the press. These groups lean left, but they came to our defense and they wrote letters to the UN's media office stating that we are media and that the UN should let us in. Well, that all caused quite the stir. And the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Head of Communications, Nick Nuttall, started defending his decision to not let us in. And because I can't resist, you have to check out this music video he made with a German singer. Say goodbye to lethargy. Save the world with this. Save the world with this. Melody. Okay, so that's the guy deciding that we couldn't go to the climate change conference. Well, even the CBC didn't agree with him. Just listen to him on CBC's As It Happens. Even far left wing host Carol Off was on our side. How do people have to prove that they're helpful in order to be accredited journalists? Well, what do you think journalism is about? Reporting. Reporting. Factually, accurately, honestly. Well, after a lot of pushback, Nick Nuttall conceded, sort of. He said two of the three rebel journalists could attend. Okay, so at least a couple of us could get in, but we were sending a team of three, myself, my cameraman, and our producer, Megan. It's pretty standard. And we were going. We would figure out how to get Megan in from on the ground there. And here's what happened in Marrakesh. Well, it was exactly what I expected. In the middle of this old world city is this big, fake, plastic tarped complex. It was a big fake city really, built in the middle of the desert with fake plywood buildings, fake cobblestone sidewalks, acres and acres of parking lots built specially for the conference. And there were fake decorative fountains and fake restaurants. And then this, they watered the desert a couple of times per day just to keep the dust off the fancy people's expensive shoes while they walked into meetings to discuss water conservation policies and force you and me to use low flow toilets in our home. And just to remind the climate hypocrites what sort of fakers they really are, the complex was conveniently located under the flight path to the airport as a less than subtle memory jog that they're just as addicted to fossil fuels as I am. There were idling limos, SUVs and buses belonging to the international delegations. And it was all day, every day that we were there. I counted 12 buses idling in one day. And it never changed. It was constantly idling vehicles. There were trash cans and recycling bins that no one knew how to use. Now these are the same politicians writing policies that make you and I sort our garbage at home. Here they are not following their own rules in the place where they come to make the policies about our garbage cans. 
There were the ancient, archaic taxis deckled up like NASCARs to promote the conference that hadn't seen a tune-up in years. And while we were out on the street watching taxis, the smog was literally choking us. And this was right in front of the conference. There were the electric car chargers that we never saw anyone use. But there was a good reason for that. When I leaned on one of them and nearly knocked it over, we discovered the chargers were fake too, like everything else at the conference. They had no batteries in them and they weren't even hooked up to anything. And once we got into the complex and settled into the media room to work, we really started shaking things up. We noticed immediately that advocacy journalists were definitely allowed to be at the conference, not ones with our political leanings though. Right across from us on the very first day were people from some place called climatetracker.org who even identify themselves as activists on their website and they even run campaigns just like we do at the Revel. Even the reasons the UN gave us for keeping us out were fake too. So we thought, what the heck, let's email our UN censor Nick Nuttall and talk to him in person and shockingly he came right over. So I thought, let's keep the winds rolling in here. So I asked him to let our producer Megan in and he did. So I thought, let's keep the winds rolling some more. And I asked him to be interviewed and he agreed here. How do you, as a former journalist, reconcile the fact that you were going to exclude us because we're advocacy journalists? So, Well, the UN has no obligation to accredit any journalist. The only, right, but the, the UN only obligation we have here is, is we are an intergovernmental organization. So nation states of the UN come here to do their negotiations and whatever. And um, so, but we try and, and, and get a lot of media here because we want the world or the public to be exposed to what is actually going on there. So, um, look, we had a misunderstanding and you keep pushing on this topic and I've come here to see you, right? right? Freedom, of speech, freedom of speech is very important to everybody and um, but sometimes you form judgments I'm not saying that you form the right judgment all the time but sometimes you take judgments or make a judgment or make a decision um, we've had a uh, yeah, back and forth about this uh, I, I've had um, some massive increases in my Twitter account and Oops. often from <laughs> extremely friendly people saying extremely cute things and, and quite a lot of interesting emails, some of which made, made me think I should buy some extra padlocks for my door or get a big... Door. And some from the lawyers. Yes, but, you know, I mean, that was, a, that was amusing, actually, that, <laughs> that, that you that one would use lawyers on the uh, accreditation when we'd already written saying, you know, fine, register. I mean... We used lawyers because we were denied initially, right? Yes, you were denied initially, and then, but I thought what was more important was, you know, there was an intervention by the Canadian Association of, is it Freedom of Speech Journalists, or, or I can't remember the Canadian point. Association of Journalists and Canadian yeah. Journalists for Free Expression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and there, so there were two of those, and then, as you know, uh, Minister McKenna's office also um, intervened, and they're a member state of the United Nations, um, so I think that this was the... Uh, tipped it. I mean, this is what, you know, so we said, okay, fine, let's, let's do it. Now, when I was asking him those questions, I was walking a dangerous line because there is a strict code of conduct for journalists covering UN events. The policy reads, no activity derisory to the UN, any of their member states, organizations, or any individual or criticism that would go against basic rules of decorum is allowed. And UN security reserves the right to, to revoke previously issued permissions for media actions anytime if the security conditions so require. So we can't even be critical of people. It's censorship from an organization that claims to foster human rights. But that's okay, I was having none of it. I wasn't going to have that stop me from saying McKenna is an embarrassment or that OPEC countries are barbarians. Aside from the activists we saw in the media room, I caught up with a demonstration and asked some of them one question. How did they get to Marrakesh? I flew here. Uh, with a shuttle. But from Tunisia? Ah, uh, by plane. How are you getting home? By plane as well. How are you getting home? I'm using, uh, we're sharing a car together. What does the car run on? Mm, I think the car runs on gas. And how are you getting home? Uh, plane, train, bike. So what did Canada do in Marrakesh? Well, the delegation was led by Catherine McKenna, the Environment Minister, so you just know she embarrassed us there. They shrunk 
the Canadian delegation to 225 people, down from 383 the year before. How frugal of them. But it was still way more than the U.S., a country 10 times our size, and the Canadian delegation did not want to talk to me. One man from the Canadian delegation actually said they were warned not to talk to me. I found Manitoba's Chief Kevin Hart, who flew all the way to Marrakesh on Canadian taxpayer money to bash Canada. And watch how much he wanted to talk to me. Hi, I'm Sheila. Nice Hi, to meet I'm you. Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Rachel, you got a card? Yeah. This is my staff. Great. Okay. No. Sorry. And for which organization? No, sorry. We're actually not available. We're on our way to another meeting. Well, he just agreed to speak to us. But he just agreed to speak to us. Why are you not speaking to us? Is it just us in particular? Is it just us in particular that you don't want to speak to? I actually tried again the next day to talk to Kevin Hart's handler and it went like this. Hi, excuse me. Could we get a card from you? Excuse me, are you Kevin Hart's press secretary? Are you Kevin Hart's press secretary? Are you here as part of the Canadian delegation? I'm a Canadian journalist. I'm, in effect, I'm footing the bill for you to be here. Could you at least give me a card? Are you part of the Canadian delegation? Did I pay for you to be here? Could you give me a card? Are you part of the Canadian delegation paid for by the Canadian taxpayer? Give it. Any comment? You're part of the Canadian delegation paid for the Canadian taxpayer. I'm a Canadian journalist. You've ran away from me twice. Is this your job as a press secretary is just to run away from the press? Like where are we going? The grass is getting long over here. And Catherine McKenna didn't let me down. She embarrassed Canada just the way I expected when she congratulated an OPEC country, the United Arab Emirates, for engaging youth on climate change. The UAE sentences women to beatings for illegal pregnancies. But oh, that Catherine McKenna, she's a feminist, you guys. But what about the Canadian commitments in Morocco? Well, they involve taxing the daylights out of you and I to try to reach their Paris Treaty targets with a brand new carbon tax while allowing municipalities to dump their sewage in rivers and oceans because they're such environmentalists. Our friend Mark Morano from Climate Depot was also in Marrakesh and we talked about what a Trump presidency means for the U.S. involvement in the Paris Treaty reached last year. Here. I'm wearing this a Trump hat to send the message to all the delegates here of Clexit, the climate exit from the UN, and that President Donald Trump is poised to pull us out of this treaty. So we've seen a lot of long faces. We've seen a lot of shock and horror at this, <laughs> at the size, at the sight of this uh, hat. We're going to try to make science great again, and that's really the, that's what our message here is to tell people that uh, uh, change is coming, at least from the United States, and hopefully other countries will follow. And then Morano was kicked out by UN and Moroccan security forces after this little stunt. We support, we, sorry, hold on, we support the tearing up of the United Nations Paris Climate Agreement. We stand in solidarity with President-elect Trump. And this is going to be the first step toward doing it. This is our shredding of the document. Ceremonial. The delegates here seem to be in deep denial over President-elect Trump's policies. Yes, Mayor. Well, can you? Let me, we're almost done. We're almost done. I've been almost done. We're about to be shut down here at the event. But Donald Trump's vision is one of an American that's strong. Well, we're still talking. President-elect Trump is not finished his best. First talk, and then we can. Climate Depot. Security shutting us down. We will not be silenced. The United States will shred the document. And finally, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry flew to Marrakesh, and it was as anticlimactic as you could possibly imagine, because what was the point? He gave a boring speech, and then he flew away, knowing full well nothing he said would matter, because Donald Trump has his own plans for the U.N. and for U.S. climate change policies. So what 
was exactly the result of the two weeks these politicians spent in Marrakesh blowing through our taxpayer money. Well, nothing. They re reaffirmed the Paris Treaty, which without the United States means diddly squat, and they issued something called the Marrakesh Action Proclamation, which is just really strongly worded social justice word salad. Seriously, this is from the actual document. It reads, we call for urgently raising ambition and strengthening cooperation amongst ourselves to close the gap between current emissions trajectories and the pathway needed to meet the long-term temperature goals of the Paris Agreement. My Lord, what does that even mean? Urgently raising ambition is like aggressively lifting motivation. It's a nothing burger alphabet soup sentence. And that's all they had to show for themselves. Being in Morocco opened my eyes. I just knew the hypocrisy abounded at these globalist shindigs. But because of your help and generosity, I was able to see it with my own eyes. And most importantly, I was able to report it back to you so that you could see it too. And that's something no other journalist has ever done. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. We want to be bigger than the CBC. We want to show you how the UN wastes your money. To find out how you can help us, go to thebigplan.ca and donate today.